Good afternoon. I'm delighted to welcome Matteo on his first visit to London as Prime Minister. We've already worked together at the European Council at last week's G7 meeting in The Hague. And today we've had the opportunity for more in-depth discussions about our bilateral relationship, about the European Union and, of course, about Ukraine. And I just want to say a word on each. On our bilateral relationship, we're both leaders who are taking the difficult decisions needed to build strong and resilient economies to create jobs and to create more secure future for hard-working people. Here in Britain this week, we're bringing in the most important changes to our tax system for a generation, including cutting corporation tax to 21% today. And I support Matteo's efforts to implement a package of ambitious reforms in Italy that will strengthen the economy there and encourage foreign investment and help hard-working Italians too. We want to increase the trading relationship between our two countries. It's already worth over £32 billion a year. And Britain is the leading European destination for Italian investors, up 5% last year, with new projects creating almost 1,800 new jobs here at home. But we believe we can do more to strengthen ties, particularly in the advanced engineering, energy and tech sectors. And we're already looking at how British businesses can seize the opportunity of the World Expo in Milan next year. We also want to work together to make the EU more competitive. Europe is falling behind the powerhouses in Asia and South America, and we need to match the difficult decisions we're taking at home with ambitious reforms in Brussels. Italy will be taking over the presidency of the EU later this year at a vitally important time. I know that Matteo wants to make growth and jobs a central theme of the Italian presidency, and today we've agreed the next commission must put an unrelenting focus on driving growth across Europe. <coughs> Cutting red tape, completing the single market in energy, unleashing Europe's digital economy. These are all things that we agree about and discussed uh, over our meeting. Uh, we also want to see these trade agreements with the rest of the world. Uh, a deal with the United States would be a massive prize, 119 billion euros a year to the European economy. That is equivalent to 545 euros for every family of four across Europe. Finally, we discussed the situation in Ukraine. We remain united in our condemnation of Russia's completely unacceptable behavior in recent weeks. Russia needs to choose the path of de-escalation and dialogue. President Putin should accept this means entering direct talks with the Ukrainian government. We share Secretary Kerry's view there should be no decisions about Ukraine without Ukraine at the table. In the long term, we want to do more to support the Ukraine government as they get to grips with their debts, they implement reforms, and they build a more prosperous future for the Ukrainian people. We also want to secure and diversify Europe's energy supply. And this is an area where we intend to do more work together in the coming months. So, Matteo, a very warm welcome. We've had good discussions. We share many objectives for the future. I look forward to working with you uh, in that uh, future. And I don't know whether it's uh, just me, but Prime Ministers seem to be getting younger all the time. <laughs> Matteo, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, everybody. And thank you for uh, your invitation. Uh, Downing Street number 10 uh, is uh, a dream for everybody. So uh, thank you so much for also for the cooperation and the partnership. Um, credo che sia molto importante per um, l'Italia riaffermare l'importanza della relazione con uh, il primo ministro David Cameron, con uh, il Regno Unito e credo che sia molto importante presentare un processo di riforme per il nostro paese che sia la condizione per l'Italia per affrontare insieme le riforme di cui l'Europa ha bisogno. L'Italia deve essere più semplice, l'Italia deve eh, migliorare se stessa, l'Italia deve fare la propria parte. Se l'Italia fa la propria parte poi è in grado, assieme a tutti i partner e in particolar modo ai partner storici, di creare un'Europa uh, un diversa. I think we want a better Europe. Not more Europe, a better Europe, uh, a, very, a very brilliant Europe against the red tape of bureaucracy and uh, with an idea of future uh, for, the, for our children, not also for our father. Credo che sia stato molto importante condividere insieme le strategie sul Mediterraneo, sull'agenda digitale, sulle sfide energetiche e anche sul futuro dell'economia e della crescita in un momento nel quale purtroppo abbiamo molto ancora da fare. Oggi commentavo con i giornalisti italiani 
e poi ne abbiamo parlato con David, i numeri della disoccupazione. 2011, UK disoccupazione 8%, Italia 8,4%. 2013, UK 7%, Italia 12,3%. Cosa è successo? In questi tre anni abbiamo perso troppa strada e adesso è arrivato il momento di rimettersi a correre con delle performance economiche che sono valide, possibili e con una collaborazione e un eh, sguardo insieme condiviso al, con l'Unione Europea e con i nostri partner che sia finalmente basato sulla crescita e non sulla burocrazia. David ha già detto tutto sull'Ucraina, ha già detto tutto sugli interessi comuni del nostro, eh, della nostra partnership, credo che sia interessante sottolineare come saremo qua a Cardiff in Galles per il vertice Nato e sono molto grato al Primo Ministro per aver accettato di svolgere il G7 dei Ministri dell'Energia in Italia prima del G7 di Bruxelles. Quindi sono molte le cose che condividiamo, credo che sarà molto interessante se questa Europa diversa che vogliamo costruire potremo farla lottando contro la paura di chi, vuole, di chi ha paura di cambiare, ma per noi deve essere chiaro che non c'è Europa, non c'è una grande Europa senza la presenza del, del Regno Unito, senza la presenza eh, di David Cameron, dei suoi concittadini. E quindi per noi è assolutamente fondamentale che in eh, questo percorso complesso e complicato che si apre il, eh, la presenza UK in Europa eh, non è un, eh, un qualcosa in discussione, è assolutamente fondamentale e cruciale per noi e lavoreremo insieme, ne sono sicuro. Thank you so much David for your invitation. Thank you Patrick. Um, I think we've got the BBC first. James Robinson from the BBC. Uh, Mr Renzi, listening to you, it makes it sound as if Italy and you are an ally of David Cameron's in wanting fundamental reform of the European Union. Am I right? Does that mean that Italy wants to bring powers back from the centre to Italy? Or is your vision of a reformed Europe completely different from the Prime Minister's? And, uh, Prime Minister, can I ask you one question about Ukraine, which is, do you really share similar ideas about the level of pressure that should be applied to Moscow? Because those countries like Italy, which are much more energy dependent, Uh, on outside sources tend to be much less in favor of applying the sort of pressure on Moscow which could produce retaliation. And finally to you, Prime Minister, many people are very angry about what they see as Royal Mail being sold off far too cheaply. Do you think people are right to feel angry that taxpayers feel that they were given a very poor deal by the government? Thank you very much. Well, Matteo, perhaps you take the question first and I will... Absolutely, absolutely, yes. I think... Uh, There is an alliance, uh, uh, not ideological, uh, not uh, um, confused, uh, in, uh, in the process of reform of Europe. But uh, for us, for Italy, today is absolutely important to uh, start from ourselves. It's impossible in Italy to um, fight against the bureaucracy of Brussels If uh, we spent a few days uh, to conclude a process of administration in our country, it's impossible for us to uh, fight against the ideas uh, of uh, bureaucracy of red tape uh, in uh, Brussels if our system is old. So for this reason, in this moment in Italy, it's absolutely important to change institutions, to change electoral law, to change constitutions yesterday. Maybe you know we present the, the reform, uh, the law of a reform of constitutions, very important because uh, this also the problems between uh, central government and regions, because change the role of Senate, because change uh, the role of uh, a part of politicians. So for us, it's possible speaking about reforms in Europe only if before we change ourselves. And this is the challenge in the second half of 2014, when Italy will lead the semester of a European presidency, I think, I think we, 
we can discuss uh, with our partners and with David uh, about the future of Europe. Thank you very much. I'm sure we're going to be great allies in fighting the bureaucracy that Matteo has just uh, referred to. I think it's really important for all countries in, in Europe to do that. To answer your questions very specifically, on, on Ukraine, um, of course different countries have different perspectives, but actually I think the EU has done well in that 28 countries came together and set out a tough, consistent and predictable set of measures uh, to send a very clear message to Vladimir Putin about what had happened, why it was wrong, and uh, what needed to happen next. And uh, crucially, at that last EU Council, we agreed that the European Commission should start to draw up uh, detailed plans for sanctions if um, Putin and Russia went further into eastern Ukraine. And I think that was a good step forward, and we agreed that. Uh, right across the EU, we agreed that. And we also agreed the important steps in terms of travel bans and asset freezes. So we all bring our different perspectives and our different histories and arguments, but actually we came together and I think we set out a, a very consistent way forward and the right way forward for the EU. On the issue of uh, energy uh, dependence on Russia, we discussed this um, in our meeting. Again, different countries have different positions. Britain is very unreliant on Russian gas. We have a very small percentage of Russian gas coming into our system. But I think where there's agreement across Europe is that this is a long-term piece of work that has to be done. It is in all our interests whether, frankly, we're reliant on Russian gas or not. It's in all our interest that all of Europe becomes less reliant, so we're a more resilient uh, continent, so that when shocks take place, they don't affect uh, the gas and oil prices so badly, uh, and countries are able to make more independent decisions. So it's a long-term piece of work, but I'm delighted that Matteo is taking on uh, the work of chairing the G7 energy uh, ministers. The meeting will take place in, in Italy because that's going to be start, a start of the process, as the EU will also take forward, of making us all more energy independent. That's going to mean building LNG terminals. It's going to mean uh, new pipelines. It's going to need, mean more interconnections between different European countries. It's going to mean completing the single market in energy. These are good things in themselves, but they will also make us less reliant on Russian gas, and that will be strengthening for all of us in the long term. But a long-term piece of work. You can't expect results immediately on that one. On the Royal Mail, what I would say is this. You know, a decade ago, this company was losing money, uh, and people thought that it was in an unrecoverable situation. I would argue the British taxpayer has benefited in three ways from the changes we put in place and the privatization that's taken place. There's the benefit of a sale of Royal Mail and the capital receipt. There's the benefit that this is now a profit-making company paying taxes into the Exchequer. And thirdly, this is a successful company doing well, doing well for Britain. So I think we're much better off with Royal Mail in the private sector, and I look forward to that work being completed. Second question, I think, is Italian media. Right. Right news. Right news. I have, I have the... Right news, not right. Sul Senato il processo è avviato, lei ha avuto diversi endorsement all'estero sulle riforme avviate in Italia. La priorità adesso è il lavoro, lei lo ripete, dice che bisogna correre, ma come coniugare la urgenza di correre con eventuale possibilità di mediazione in Italia? Uh, a question for Prime Minister Cameron. Um, in, in the same way uh, Renzi's government has proposed a series of reforms, your government has proposed uh, a few points to remain in Europe. So uh, what kind of support the Eurosceptical United Kingdom can find in Italy whose dreams is the United States of Europe? Thank you. Um, percorso italiano è un percorso molto chiaro. Riforme costituzionali, cambio delle regole del gioco nella pubblica amministrazione, modifica profonda del sistema fiscale e della giustizia civile e naturalmente modifica delle regole sul mercato del lavoro. Noi abbiamo un sistema in cui manca flessibilità. Eh, vi ho ricordato prima delle statistiche. Queste statistiche sono statistiche che hanno visto crescere la disoccupazione nonostante che le regole che erano state fatte avrebbero dovuto migliorare e semplificare il quadro del gioco. Dunque la ricetta di questi anni è sbagliata, 
La ricetta di questi anni sul mercato del lavoro ha prodotto più burocrazia e non ha risolto i problemi. Nel settore della formazione professionale in Italia hanno lavorato molto i formatori e poco le persone che avevano bisogno di lavorare. Quindi noi dobbiamo dare più semplicità e più rapidità. Eh, per questi motivi ho raccontato a David la nostra scelta già fatta, un decreto legge già approvato sul mondo dei contratti a termine e dell'apprendistato, già legge oggi perché è decreto legge e ieri abbiamo ufficialmente eh, presentato al Parlamento il disegno di legge delega, cioè un percorso di legge che dovrà andare in Parlamento per il sistema italiano sulla riforma delle regole del gioco, del codice del lavoro per dare anche garanzie a chi non le ha avute in questi anni ma per dare maggiore possibilità alle imprese di venire a investire in Italia. Giusto per concludere un esempio, in Italia oggi ci sono 2100 articoli che si occupano di, di regole sul mondo del lavoro. È normale che alla fine si finisce sempre di fronte a un tribunale. Oggi noi abbiamo in testa un codice del lavoro che abbia soltanto 50-60 articoli che sia scritto anche in inglese, molto chiaro per gli investitori e che consenta tempi certi, per cui se fai un'operazione sai quanto ci impieghi, chi la fa e come sono le regole del gioco. Questo procedimento va avanti, ci sono naturalmente tutte le mediazioni possibili che stanno dentro il dibattito parlamentare, ma non puoi cambiare, cambiare l'impostazione di fondo, che è quella di dare garanzie a chi non ne ha e di dare la libertà agli imprenditori finalmente di assumere e di assumere in modo vero. Um, thank you. Well, in terms of the support that I, I hope to get uh, from Italy, which was your question, of course, Matteo and I will have our differences. Um, he's on the centre left, I'm on the centre right, but we're both reformers. We both want to reform Europe, so it focuses more on the economy and jobs. We both want to reform Europe, so it focuses on cutting uh, bureaucracy. And we both want to achieve uh, keeping Britain in a reformed European Union. So I think there's lots of opportunity uh, to work together. What I'm taking from what Matteo has just said is that, frankly, there's no point uh, deregulating in Italy if you have those regulations reimposed in Brussels. And that is exactly the approach I take. And so I think there's a, uh, a really good alliance that we can forge on this, on this vital issue. Uh, Sky News. Thank you, Jeremy Jones from Sky News. Uh, could I ask both of you whether you had the opportunity to discuss your expectations for the first match at the World Cup uh, at some point? Um, Prime Minister Renzi, could I... <laughs> I said we wouldn't agree about everything. <laughs> Would you mind, is it clear from what you're saying that treaty change in Europe cannot be a priority for you or your country at the moment? And on the specific issue of uh, freedom of movement, you will know that David Cameron has said that freedom of movement should not be an absolute right, that he's uh, making sure that he feels that uh, there should be restrictions on, for example, welfare benefits for people who come from one country to another. Is that an agenda that you agree with, that you are willing to pursue? Uh, and Prime Minister David Cameron, could I ask you, uh, what is your issue with the Muslim Brotherhood at the moment? Because looking at the situation in Egypt currently, many people would say that the organisation is perhaps more sinned against than sinning. Let me take the question on the Muslim Brotherhood. Um, look, I think it's very important people understand that as a government, we are obviously opposed to violent extremism, the violent extremism that we've seen on our streets, tragically, uh, in, for instance, that dreadful incident in, in Woolwich. But we're also a government that is opposed to extremism. We want to uh, encourage people away from a path of extremism. We want to challenge the extremist narrative that some uh, extreme Islamist organizations have put out. What I think is important about the Muslim Brotherhood is to make sure we fully understand what this organization is, what it stands for, what its links are, what its beliefs are in terms of both extremism and violent extremism, what its connections are with other groups, what its presence is here in the United Kingdom. Our policy should be informed by a complete picture of that uh, knowledge. And that's why I've commissioned this piece of work uh, by a, a very experienced uh, and senior ambassador, John Jenkins, who's our ambassador in uh, Saudi Arabia. And I think it's an important piece of work because we'll only get our policy right if we fully understand the true nature of the organization that we're dealing with. Matteo. 
Well, we don't discuss. Uh, we, did discuss we, don't discuss. we did discuss the World Cup. But, uh, uh, this is a problem. Uh, this is a problem because uh, I'm very supporter of the of the trainer uh, um, of City, of, uh, trainer of Italian uh, soccer team uh, Cesare Prandelli. So I supported him, uh, and obviously I supported the, 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 our national team. But in this moment, is not. Uh, we are not sure about the results. Uh, I think our alliance uh, is not a problem for the match, uh, so um, jokes apart. Um, in this moment in Italy, the priority is a different idea of the future of our countries. Uh, in the last period, uh, Europe, this is my personal opinion, lost the, the, the uh, quality of dream and become only a place uh, of uh, bureaucracy and uh, of uh, red tape. So, for this reason, I believe uh, the first challenge uh, is not to uh, discuss uh, about uh, your questions, but um, about uh, uh, the vision for the next generation of Europe as a place of freedom. And first of all, this uh, could be possible only if we invest in a different idea of growth, a different idea of uh, institutional uh, levels. And for this reason, the alliance with David is absolute. Uh, for the rest, uh, we have a lot of time uh, to discuss. Uh, but in this moment, I believe absolutely crucial for Italy the presence of UK in Europe, not only for the past of UK, but for the future of Europe. Because this is not simply a tradition. This is not simply an um, idea of the past. This is the challenge for the future generation and for our children. And uh, this is the priority. For the rest, we discuss in the future. Thank you. Final question from the Italian media. Last radio call. There's a microphone coming. With the Italian sound. Okay. Okay. Without the microphone, it's impossible the translation. Also because my translation is terrible. <laughs> Italia e Regno Unito hanno molti legami nel mondo della finanza, come dimostra la fusione fra Borsa di Milano e London Stock Exchange. Che messaggio porta la City in vista eh, anche della nuova tornata di privatizzazione in Italia e della necessità di sostenere il, il collocamento dei titoli di Stato italiani? E poi ha in programma incontri con personaggi del mondo della finanza o li ha già incontrati? Invece per il Presidente Cameron, siccome eh, Renzi ha sottolineato appunto il trend diverso che ha avuto la disoccupazione del Regno Unito rispetto a quello che è successo negli ultimi tre anni in Italia, volevo sapere se ha una ricetta da proporre, un suggerimento da dare in particolare. Grazie. Um, molto brevemente, credo che eh, io non ho da dare un messaggio alla City, ma ho da prendere un messaggio dalla City. Negli ultimi giorni, nelle ultime settimane, c'è una grandissima attenzione verso il mercato italiano, da tutto il mondo, e che essendo Londra capitale della finanza mondiale ha in questa città il luogo nel quale le cose accadono ma se lei guarda i dati degli ultimi giorni nelle ultime settimane molti investitori stanno scommettendo sul futuro dell'italia lo considero una cosa positiva che anche i media italiani stanno iniziando a affrontare soltanto adesso non faccio nomi e riferimenti per il rispetto delle singole aziende grande 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 interesse verso l'italia per tanti motivi, perché l'Italia eh, ha un percorso di stabilità davanti da qui al 2018, perché si è capito che l'Italia non è più un problema per l'Europa, perché le riforme danno il senso che finalmente questo Paese vuole investire sul futuro e non soltanto pagare i debiti del passato. Per queste ragioni non ci sono incontri specifici con la City, ho recepito il messaggio che è arrivato è chiaro che questo messaggio avrà un senso soltanto quando tornerà a diminuire la disoccupazione in Italia. 
è l'inizio di un percorso. Vedrete nei prossimi mesi come questo cambiamento porterà l'Italia a tornare sotto la doppia cifra della, della disoccupazione. Noi vogliamo tornare sotto il 10%. Questo è il nostro obiettivo e ci arriveremo nei prossimi mesi e nei prossimi anni. È un obiettivo che possiamo raggiungere. Ehm, esponenti della finanza, ovviamente è impossibile non incontrare esponenti della finanza a Londra, anche al semaforo si incontrano, quindi non è, non è un problema. Incontreremo alcune espressioni dell'economia eh, inglese domani mattina in residenza, ospiti dell'ambasciatore che ringrazio e incontreremo anche alcune ehm, testate specializzate. Vorrei però dire anche contemporaneamente che oggi tra le tante cose che facciamo c'è un settore che sta crescendo molto nell'export anche nel Regno Unito che è quello del fashion eh, e non è l'unico. Io credo che sarà importante lavorare insieme anche sul food per dimostrare che i cibi italiani fanno bene e l'evento a cui David ha fatto riferimento dell'Expo a Milano sarà molto importante. Però questa sera c'è un appuntamento per me molto breve, non più di un quarto d'ora, ma molto interessante per voi sul fashion e sulla storia italiana nell'ambito di questo settore che è uno dei pezzi trainanti dell'export italiano. Um, well, I'm sure Matteo non need my advice, he has a very clear program for cutting unemployment, but for countries that have big deficits, that have Uh, large debts, there is no choice. You can't increase employment by expanding the public sector. You have to do something very simple, which is you have to make it easier for one person to say to another person, come and work for me. And so what we've done here in the UK is we've backed startup businesses, we've cut jobs taxes, we've invested in apprenticeships, we've helped small businesses, we've made it easier for people to get a job and to keep a job. And in the end, there are no uh, shortcuts to that. It's about having a flexible and active and attractive labor market. We've got 1.3 million more people in work than when I first walked through the doors of number 10 Downing Street. I know that Matteo has the same sorts of ambitions for Italy, to make it easier to employ people, to get people more jobs, and to make sure that right across Europe we see unemployment fall, which we need to. Uh, and we must, uh, here in the UK, we're going to keep at it. Uh, this week, we give a 2,000 pound national insurance rebate to small businesses, which will help them, uh, we hope, to take on even more people and keep this good job story going. Uh, can I thank you again very much for coming, Matteo? It's been really good to have these um, uh, discussions. Next time we'll have to uh, uh, review the World Cup progress in a bit more detail. I think we're playing in a climate that might uh, suit Italian players a little bit more than British players, but I've got full confidence in the management and in the team, and I'm sure it'll be a great contest. Thank, thank you. you so much.